the main focus for us as a protocol is okay we understand the i the vision of this ecosystem our main thing is how to unlock key i mean users TVL volume and make it much easier for people to come and try out Polkadot and to understand what they can do on Polkadot. Polkadot Insider is thrilled to have Azit. He is the co-founder at Stella Swap. Hey, hey everyone. Great to be here. Great. Uh, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. So um, before anything, uh, please, uh, we would love to know about you and uh, your background, how you got to Web3. Yeah, sure. My name is Aziz. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of StellarSwap. So before Web3, I was actually in the traditional financial markets, being a financial analyst. So just looking at Bloomberg all day, doing analysis. Uh, then after I sort of like ventured into crypto web three because it was booming. I mean there was a lot of stuff back in 2016, and then I was more interested. Created Master the Crypto, which was one of a media company that just talks about uh, crypto feature analysis, and grew it to like millions of readers across the world. Uh, and sort of like it was acquired, right? And after that, moved on to a new venture, still in crypto, doing a centralized exchange in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the first regulated crypto exchanges in the Middle East uh, as one of the co-founders. And, and obviously had a great time, you know, learning about the uh, everything and building stuff on ground up, working, liaising with stakeholders, governments, users as well. I was there for three years and sort of like I wanted to explore new pastures within DeFi, you know, to build to build on this new innovation, right? So then we jumped at that point of time, Polkadot's first five auctions was there, Moonbeam, Akela. So we jumped on the opportunity and built StellarSwap, which is a DEX on Moonbeam. And we've been uh, like the number one DEX ever since on Moonbeam. Right now, the most popular DEX on Polkadot as well. I can tell. But uh, are you a builder yourself or you grab yeah. your team as well? So yeah, uh, we as uh, part of most of the team from StellarSwap came from the centralized exchange. Mm -hmm. So we, all the core members, we, we sort of like the engineers and myself, I'm more focused on the product and, and yeah, and we sort of like had a good chemistry and synergy and then we sort of like built StellarSwap together. So Stella, StellarSwap, it's big on Moonbeam everyone's know and maybe you can walk us a little bit through StellarSwap itself. Yeah, so StellarSwap is, a, is a basically a hybrid DEX, right? We have three AMMs under the hood, a hybrid AMM basically, and a router to bind and to unify liquidity across, right? With the, we're basically a very efficient DEX. On Moonbeam, we're EVM as well. So what that allows us to do is provide a sense of familiarity with users, you know, just connecting to their MetaMask, you know, as well as connecting to other protocols, which is composability, right? which is very important. That allows us to offer a lot of functionalities uh, on Polkadot, which hasn't been done before, right? Crossing swaps, V3 staking. So those are the kind of stuff that we are uh, being the DEX. Our core value proposition is being facilitating trades the most efficient way possible. And that's what we're focused on. And yeah, also we're basically a, a gateway as well, right? Uh, being a DEX. So that allows us to launch new products and new features like liquid staking, cross-chain swap, sex on ramps you know, uh, with the sole purpose of making life easy for the users on Polkadot and Moonbeam. I see. Uh, I mean, as a DEX, every DEX, even sex, they want to attract as much as users as they can. So with all the features that you have uh, said it, uh, if you have to say a free sentence, how would you um, like condense Stellar swap in for the end users. So basically, the gateway to Polkadot in a, a familiar EVM setting. So that's that's basically the TLDR. Why do you think that EVM is important? Because I mean, from a user point of view, familiarity and usage. You know, familiar with EVM, most people have made a mask, right? So it's very easy for them. You know, when they look at another new network, they jump on it with their MetaMask, right? So that's on the user end. On a protocol and composability is very very important especially for Polkadot, which is based on Substrate, right? So for example, key functionalities that makes life better and adds a lot of value to the ecosystem, like cross-chain swaps, right? Automated V3 staking, right? With an EVM infra that allows us to work with key OGs in the space, like Beefy, like Squid, 
you know, and us integrating into them and them integrating into us in a very easy way. Because we're EVM, integration is quick, right? And that, that integration allows us to sort of like compose new features, new products in the mix, right? Which wouldn't be possible, you know, if we had to build all these components from ground up. So that's a very important. And uh, with that being said, how is the Polkadot ecosystem can actually contribute anything to Stellar Swap and, you know, the opposite side as well? Yeah, so one of the main things that we came and built into this ecosystem is because Polkadot, Gavin, Dr. Gavin Owood, I mean, thought leaders in blockchain engineering, um, interoperability, scalability, that basically the most pure form of uh, in addressing the trilemma, blockchain trilemma, right? So we wanted to build on that premise. And yeah, with the EVM site on Moonbeam, what that allows us to do was to be at the epicenter of EVM as well as the power of substrate of Polkadot. And that is what is sort of like our main focus, right? The main focus for us as a protocol is, okay, we understand the I, the vision of this ecosystem. Our main thing is how to unlock key, I mean, users, TVL, volume, and make it much easier for people to come and try out Polkadot and to understand what they can do on Polkadot. So that's basically how we plan uh, always on our minds on how to add value, on how we craft strategies and launch products uh, based on that question. I believe that DeFi is something that one of the narratives that can attract end users to a ecosystem. So yeah, so uh, just another question for product. So are there any difficulties for the team when, you know, to differentiate Stellar Swap from other decks and any milestones that you would like to share with us? Yeah, thanks. I mean, part of the numbers speak for itself. We're basically the only DEX that has surpassed a billion dollars in, in, in trade, community trade volume. We're now at 1.7 billion. We have over 16,000 unique wallet addresses uh, that interacts with Stellar Swap. Uh, and part of the reason why uh, beyond, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I shared earlier about, you know, EVM, familiarity, composability, and that's basically what we're always sort of like driving down on. Uh, and the fact that we're a V3, right? A concentrated liquidity AMM. So this also means extremely efficient. In fact, V3 AMM is the most efficient AMM right now in DeFi because it, uh, it basically follows the liquidity distribution of a centralized exchange order book. The liquidity concentration is a very important thing that means that we are more efficient than other DEXs that are not concentrated liquidity in Polkadot. So just to give an idea, right? A million dollar in a concentrated liquidity pool has the same liquidity depth as, for example, a 10 million or even a 20 million TBL uh, DEX that is not concentrated liquidity. Right? So that, I mean, that shows a lot in terms of the efficiency. Right? And, and how we only need much smaller TVL requirements to achieve liquidity, but as well as ecosystem grants, which is extremely important, that we do not waste those. We basically ensure that ecosystem grants are effectively used. So that's, that's an important point to note as well. So I would love to hear about your thoughts on meme coin because, you know, recently uh, we saw Teleswap has released like pink or dead. So um, what are your thoughts about meme coin first? Do you think that it can be it can become a sustainable narrative in a way? I mean, meme coins are a good way of creating very cheap exposure to an ecosystem. Well, just like how Solana did it, you know, and a lot of other ecosystems did it. I mean, the merits of being in meme coins is that it aligns, it sort of aligns with the culture of like DeFi degens, you know, and it shines a light into, oh, you know what, uh, uh, a utility in DeFi, which is uh, NFTs, uh, sorry, uh, which meme coins, right, uh, to sort of like gamble, stuff like that. But no one can doubt that it's a, it's a good marketing tool, right? In the case of Polkadot, so, I mean, they are like pink, dead, but they, they haven't reached the levels of what we see in other ecosystems. Perhaps we're still new. Uh, perhaps a lot of, lots of stuff needs to be done in, in a more organic and community-minded way. Not saying that it's bad, you know, there are some valid sort of like proofs, but at the same time, it is also our responsibility as a DEX to ensure that you know, not every and all meme coins are listed because it could be a cash grab, you know. There must be proper due diligence in place to ensure that people are not just creating stuff to rub others. Yeah, so that that's on us, basically. Mm -hmm. Be more careful. And that'll be to your 
perspective or for the whole team, like for, for now? Is it for Stellar Swap? Is that like a direction? Oh uh, yeah, I mean we're happy to work with any meme coin projects, mm -hmm. you know, to or list things to support in any way, you know, or even to refer them to any other stakeholders. So yeah, meme coins is is also one of the things that we look at, you know, in terms of gen working with other products within the ecosystem uh, as the top as the leading decks to help, you know, uh, put them at the pedestal of exposure. Is that your um one of the priority goal right now for Stellar Swap or it can be it, it considered to be like an add-on or anything asset, beside that? Asset listing is generally is something we is one of our core value as in core things that we look at and yeah as in working with projects and doing due diligence is something that is some as we do on a continual basis right so yeah we're constantly looking out for new projects for existing projects to list and to work with them definitely probably it could be like a a good way to get people on board for especially like decks right yeah so, that's an option yeah. yeah so looking like forward to this year do you guys plan to you know release out more of the meme coins or any new upcoming plans for you guys? Yeah, I mean, meme coins is definitely one thing that we look at, but doesn't mean like there are 10 applications and we list all 10, right? We have to be, we have to perform extreme due diligence to ensure like, you know. There'll be criteria. Yeah, there's, there's a very rigorous criteria, right? For the protection of our users as well and to set a good standard, right? I mean, beyond asset listings, uh, there's also, I mean, key stuff that we have to look at, right? Which is creating new avenues for, I mean, or solidifying avenues for capital inflows into Polkadot, you know, create more tooling infrastructure for users, you know, to simplify stuff, to simplify staking, uh, to integrate more use cases, open up new markets in terms of LST utility, for example. So all of these are like top priority for us. And uh, yeah, we're glad to be one of the two main recip the recipients of the DOT Treasury grants, which will hopefully help to boost ecosystem growth of Polkadot, as well as Glimmer grants to help further boost the ecosystem, right? So like dual in ecosystem incentive grants to spread more liquidity growth within the ecosystem. So that's really what we're, uh, is our top priority right now. I want to go um, a little bit fun, crazy, but at the end of this interview, so uh, there will be different narratives. Any narratives that you are looking at right now that can you know progress in this year can be big so rwas ai okay. those are good sort of like things which are heating up right and therefore it very interested to sort of like you know work with existing teams and new teams to for listings you know which is presumably a core strategy for any project right which is to list their points in a dex as well as a central exchange, of course, but as one of the leading dexes in, in Polkadot, you know, helping to list all these key hot uh, projects within like RWS, uh, EI is something that we're, we're excited to sort of like bring, shine a spotlight into this uh, ecosystem. Can DEX have like products related to RWAS? Yeah, I mean, you can imagine, for example, RWA asset commodities back stuff listed on a DEX, right? That would be a sort of like a cool use case, you know, to extend the use cases of purely on-chain asset trading, but also RWS as well. So that's a cool use case uh, for RWS that we have like sort of like hypothesized along the way. Let's see. So um, it's been great chatting with you. It's very nice to see, you know, like another perspective of a co-founder from a DEX. And uh, just one more thing, how do you envision the world of Web3 uh, for five years, for the next five years, in your opinion? Yeah, I think uh, momentum and growth is, is continually positive so far. So I'm uh, really happy to see uh, what we're seeing is basically more legitimacy and mainstream, I mean, mainstream sort of like attention, exposure and move, especially from the institutional and I mean, that provides a lot of credibility, right, in TradFi. So having this institution set up, you know, having exposure within the ecosystem, I think in the next five years, you can see that being exponentially explored as well as regulations with more set in stone, which would further fuel adoption within the space. So you can see, you know, with the rise, I mean, with ETFs on the way or, or being passed. So the institutional adoption and push is something that you can see a lot of in the that we will hopefully see in the next five years, which will fuel the rest of the ecosystem. I see. Thank you for being here today. Pleasure. Pleasure is mine. Thank you for having me.